welcome to They Tried to Bury Us. My name is Tamar Katan. I'll be your host. I'm a comedian, a writer, and an actor. I was born in Egypt and moved to America when I was just a kid, so I'm very proud of being an immigrant. And ever since I started doing comedy, I've met more and more immigrants and I have found more and more amazing stories. And that's what this podcast is all about. Each week, I'm going to have a new guest. They're going to sit down and share with us their American origin stories. And we're going to get to know each other better. And we're going to find out that we're all just the same. So tune in each week. Tell every single person you know. And thanks for listening. Oh, no, no, not at all. You actually have to be the sweetest dude I've ever met. Thank you. In That's comedy, so nice. which is Thank very you. hard to find. Thank you. That's very nice. <laughs> can we can we keep that part on the episode? <laughs> <laughs> no, coming from a woman, that's a huge compliment. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, You raised a really good son, by the way. Aww, oh, so thank nice. you. It's yeah. so nice. Thank you. Uh, but He's after good. hearing the first episode, now I understand why. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah. That's super nice. All right. Well, you guys ready? I yeah. like this sort of organic beginning that we're doing. It's cool. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of They Tried to Bury Us. And again, I know from time to time, it's super lame and cliche and sounds kind of commercial that I'm like, thank you. But I, I have to say thank you. We've gotten a ridiculous amount of messages, some really sweet ones, some really touching ones. There's some really amazing stories that are coming up where people actually going through the immigration process right now. Uh, there's a woman in Maine who married a man from Iran and they had to go to Spain to get married. It sounds like a song, right? Yeah. yeah. It's a a woman from romance. Maine <laughs> married a man from Iran in Spain. I can't say. Okay. So, uh, and, and you know, they contacted us and they want to talk to us about the situation they're going through because of some of the new um, laws that are being passed that are making it harder, even for someone who's married to bring their husband into the country, which I, I can't even imagine what that's like to have, a government be able to stop you from being with your loved one. Yeah. So anyway, so I'm really excited to have uh, have you guys meet all all uh, the guests that are coming up. Thank you for all the support, and, and please continue doing it. Um, and Kitty, thank you for being my co-host. Thanks for being here. No problem, and nothing wrong to say thank you. Yeah, it's a great I agree. Thing. I agree. Yeah. That's mean you're very polite, very nice man, and I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I'm proud of you too. Well, listen, I am. I'm really excited for you to meet our guest today. Um, she's a female comedian, mm -hmm. and we met uh, we met doing comedy a while ago in San Diego. In San Diego, that's over right. Over a year ago, yeah. That's right. We met in San Diego over a year ago. Please welcome to the podcast Michelle Alejandra Stevenson Nunez. Wow, <laughs> did I say that right? Yeah, you did. I said this earlier. I'm going to say it again because I like it. <laughs> yeah. I feel like your name has been gentrified. My name is so gentrified. My name uh, actually serves hot dogs in the same place it serves tacos. <laughs> 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 Two white people moved into this Latin neighborhood. Yeah. Like Alejandra and Nunez are like, who's this Michelle person <laughs> yeah. who moved into the front of our name? Yep. And then Nunez is like, you won't believe who moved in next to me. A Stevenson. My whole life has been that battle. I don't like, I don't even know who I am. <laughs> I'm surprised in the middle of your name isn't the word Starbucks. <laughs> I know, right? Michelle Alejandra Stevenson, Starbucks, Bucks. Nunez, yeah. Carniceria. And we serve cafe con leche and lattes. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm so excited to chat with you because I, I have a very mixed background and you're I've met a lot of people from from places so far. We've had so much fun. Like we, we keep having conversations about the podcast now. Yeah. Um because we've met so many interesting people. But I think you're the first person that we've interviewed so far where I go, Oh, she's mixed in a way that I'm kind of mixed. Yeah. So tell me about you. Where's your family from? Okay. So basically uh, my whole family is Born in Chile. My bo my parents were both born in Chile. Um, my mother in San Diego, but like my mother's side is like super broke. Uh -huh. And uh, the native Chileans from there are called Mapuches. It's like an indigenous tribe. Mapuches? Yeah, Mapuches. It's a cool name. Yeah. And uh, my dad's side is actually of like both his parents were European. Um, my grandfather w had moved there from like London. And then my grandmother was a um, l born in Germany. But she was a nurse during the Second World War, but a Red Cross nurse. Your grandmother? Yeah. And she fled the Second World War 
to Switzerland because she saw too much stuff. And to this day, wow. she only told her daughter, which is my aunt Heidi, but she won't even repeat those stories to me. That's how horrific they were. Yeah, I can imagine. And so my grandmother uh, moved to Switzerland, met this family, ended up taking care of their kids. And they're like, we're moving to Chile. We're not because it was taking over everywhere. The Second World War. Like, they're like, we couldn't do this. Wow. So they took her with them. And my grandpa met my grandmother. They did not understand each other at all. And they were talking to each other in these like little language dictionaries. Amazing. That's so cool. And they got married within three months. Analog love. Yeah. Over 50 years, their marriage. You know, you want to hear something ridiculous about being a comedian? In the middle of this great story, you mentioned these Mapuches. Yeah. (laughs) And immediately, instead of, and my brain goes, my neck, my back, my My pooches, pooches. and my back. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I'm I'm sorry. I'm going to use that. I'm a bad bad person. I'm going to use that. That's totally fine. I'm also blown away. I mean, we're going to get into this later, but you became a nurse too. Yeah. That's so cool. But I didn't know that until this week. Like, I, I, I just thought, like, my whole life, I thought... Oh, you know, they just fled the Nazi party. Like, I didn't know the whole story because the one time I did try to ask as a kid, we, we took a trip to Chile for Christmas. And I remember asking her because we just read a book about Anne Frank. So, like, I'm barely knowing the story. And so I asked her because I knew she was in the war because my dad had said it. And I was like, what was the war like? And that's not an, something an eight-year-old should be asking, but uh-huh. you're eight years old. You don't know any better. Sure. And my dad was really upset. And then my grandmother was like, you know, we do not answer these questions at the table. Like, just very, like, wow. upset. So I never asked again. Mm. I just didn't want to. I didn't feel comfortable. And then I finally, you know, after years that she passed, she passed the same year my dad did. And I finally asked my aunt, and I said, hey, you know, what's her story? And she said, just know she saw too many ugly things that I can't even repeat. Wow. And out of respect for her, I prefer not to. Mm. Yeah. I can't even imagine what it would be like to be a nurse. In, uh, in, it's intense. <laughs> well, well, you're, no, but in a war stricken country, in a war, it, in a war zone too, yeah. like that, the stuff, and especially back then, I feel like war was even more. War back then was more personal, almost. You know, P- soldiers would see each other face to face. There was less technology, so I, I think the violence was worse than pro- probably the worst violence we'll ever see in a war is the kind of stuff nurses must have seen. Yeah, and I didn't know this until now, so I was like, oh, it made sense why I became what I became. Isn't that weird? It makes you think too that genetics and DNA isn't just cells. Like mm-hmm. there's there's mm-hmm. pieces of personality sometimes that travel oh, absolutely. in our in our bodies. Mm-hmm. You know, wow, that's really amazing. Yeah. Okay, so they shut you down from wanting to talk about war. You knew you were going to be on this podcast, so then you started making phone calls and speaking to relatives. Yep, I had to because like I knew that there were missing pieces. Yeah, and so, but it like I found out so much, and like my like I call her Omi because it's a German name of grandma, and like it just. It made a lot of sense. And like, we were the same way where we were timid, but like also very personable. And like, yeah. I, I just found out a lot of things about her that she liked to joke around. She was the jokester of the family. And I'm like, oh, she's just me. Yeah. Huh? So yeah. like, and unfortunately she lived in Chile my whole life. So I only got to spend like a couple Christmases here and there, but I never really got to know her at a like deep connection level. Mm-hmm. I have some of her items, but that's about it. Wow. Yeah. So we we're, okay. So you, so now your your family uh, from a generation even before mm-hmm. moves to Chile from Germany. Yeah. So then, what about what about your parents? What was the motivation for them to go from Chile to the United States? No, well, actually, it was a very jump, jump, skip kind of deal. So during the time, my mother's side uh, of the family, her family had to leave because there was a coup in Chile. Mm. There, remember that movie I told you about? Yes, Colonia. Yes. Yeah. So basically, uh, there was a socialist president at the time. And he um, basically, it was kind of like Venezuela and Chile, where uh, the Americans got involved, Nixon got involved, and he uh, hired someone, Augusto Pinochet, to overrule the country. It was so bad that the president at the time, Salvador Allende, killed himself. Wow. wow. And there was what's called el, um, un orden del toque, which means like an or- a military order where you couldn't leave your house after a certain hour Mm. because you were considered a revolutionary and a rebellion against the new regime. You know things are bad when the president kills himself. Yeah. Oh, my God. Can you imagine what people must feel like when they go, the president just killed himself? Yeah, so it was a very mixed up time. Pinochet took over, who is a German-Chilean dictator, Mm -hmm. and, you know, they started doing toque parties. So, like, whatever house you were at, 5 or 6 o'clock, you were staying there until the next morning so you wouldn't get killed or tortured or murdered. So many people went missing. 
uh, so many people were tortured. There was these German Catholic concentration camps where activists that were just trying to actively journalize what was going on would find themselves in these torture chambers. Wow. So it was really crazy. My mother was a young girl at this time. My dad was already in college. My dad was a little bit older than my mom. So my dad was, uh, he had, I, I guess, gotten an opportunity in Venezuela and he fled there for like a couple of years to work. And then my mother's side of the family, because uh, his company, I guess my grandfather's company worked for Allende, who was the president that assassinated himself. There was basically an order for people to get murdered oh. for people who supported the socialist president. Wow. So it's like it's 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 kind of like if Bernie were to run and you were a Bernie supporter and Trump's now in office, there's a hit for people who were Bernie supporters. Yeah. Crazy. So my grandfather's my grandfather's family had to leave and they left to Venezuela. That's where my parents met. Wow. Yeah. So it was and then unfortunately at that time in the 80s, you know, my parents got married. That's when they were starting to have kind of the same thing, but that same ideology stuck. So they mask it as so like socialism, but really it's a totalitarian regime. Yeah. And I think people really need to study the differences because it's not, it gets in, in, like in politics, it gets very confused, unfortunately. And conservatives will always throw out bad ideas about sociology and immediately Venezuela comes up. Yeah. And they actually don't know, no, that's not, so, that's not socialism. That's a totalitarian regime. Yeah. So they met there. My dad immediately fell in love with my mother. Same story. They got married within two months, had my sister. Wow. Yeah. Two months. You didn't have game. My dad was just like, hey, I'm going to play the pipe down. And they were communicating through phrase books and stuff. No, no, no. no. That, oh, that's oh, not my sorry, parents. Those sorry. are my grandparents. Sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, they understood each other. My dad was like, oh, no, I'm laying the pipe down. Like, I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna make your mom mine. And then at that time, like everything was good up until there was like a, a leader before Hugo Chavez that started that kind of like socialism and people were starting to become really poor. Businesses were getting overthrown. My grandpa was like, why don't we try out Miami? Mm. And they f went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth about four or five times until finally they, they all went there. Oh, wow. So, so when they were going back and forth, were they... They were just trying to see what it was like. Gotcha. And my grandpa didn't like it the first time around. He's like, nah, it's really racist. I don't like it. There's mm -hmm. too many drugs. And then he kept going back because he saw how much poverty there was growing in Venezuela. Yeah. He was like, this is going to lead to something really bad. And so that's when like they all left. And then me and my sister were born in Miami. Mm. Yeah. Wow. That's it's It's. I think people forget like America's scary for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know, when you first coming first coming over and seeing like the, here's, here's what's tough for me when I hear these stories is that because we've met with so many different immigrants and hear so many stories about governments behaving badly, it's almost like this. I almost feel like the American government is this well-trained wolf. Yeah. And now we're hearing stories about wolves who go wild. Oh yeah. And it makes me nervous when I hear a president who praises other dictators. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. He's almost letting you know. Yeah. Like, like, hey, this is what I believe. I think this is okay. Absolutely. The way they, they, to attack people that didn't vote for me. He's already doing it now. Yeah. So this isn't about, this isn't about Democrat versus Republican. This is about America versus dictatorships. Yeah. And the crazy part is too, is like, I asked my grandparents in the past, like, you know, what do you think of Pinochet? Because he was a horrible person. Yeah. Like the people who he sent out to torture people, like they did really harsh things. Like there's a story, but there's a folk artist by the name of Salvador, uh, no, not Allende, what's his name? Uh, Victor Jara. And he was like a folks. He was kind of like, who's that? Bob Dylan. Similar to that, but mm. in South America. Hey, Kitty, what does Jara mean in Arabic? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Victor shit. <laughs> Pobrecito. <laughs> if he only knew now. It's fun when words mean other yeah. things in yeah. other <laughs> countries. <laughs> oh, <sorry>. Basically. <laughs> so these... <laughs> there were like... Okay, so when people would get tortured after they were past that hour and were still on the streets... They would be taken to soccer fields and physically oh, tortured. Yeah. Wow. In public, huge soccer fields, and they'd get tortured. And Victor Jara was famous at the time, you know, for being a peace folk artist, kind of like a John Lennon. Mm -hmm. And they were like, well, sing now. He's a guitar artist. They chopped off his hands. Wow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And it was all over the news. It was really intense. And I remember reading that story and be like, oh, my God. And then I heard his songs and I was like, oh, that's why they didn't want peace at the time. Yeah. 
So it was crazy. It. That's back what then. Khashoggi did. That's yeah, what the uh, the it. crown prince of Saudi Arabia just dismembered Khashoggi and, and mm, tortured him violence. by taking off his the, the the amount of violence is insane. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's sad because like here's the problem in the con like this is the internal conflict I have. My grandparents now, even though there was like a hit out for them and everything. Chile. There was a hit out on your grandparents too. Well, my grandpa, my dad's, like my mother's side who left to Venezuela. Oh, gotcha. That they were the only ones out of their whole family. They were just like, okay, we're out of here. Bye. Like we don't have a choice. Yeah. So <laughs> I didn't find out until years later because Chile prospered. Chile now is one of the second biggest economies under in Pinochet? South America. Yeah. Under Pinochet, he basically grew economically the, the country over a span of five, 10 years, mm. despite of the inhumanitarian things that he did, yeah. torturing and killing thousands of people, the country grew in prosperity and yeah. economically. So like when I asked my mom about this, I'm like, well, how do you feel? She goes, well, I don't like what he did, but Chile grew over time. So it's kind of like, well, do you support that? She's like, I don't know what I support. So she's conflicted herself. You know, it is. It's it's like Michael Jackson, right? You go like he's this amazing <laughs> talent. Up. Yeah. But his dad beat the living crap out of him. Yeah, and he molested children. And he molested children. Well, well, yeah. So there's all these things, and you go, wait a minute. The the way he treated his son, right? The yeah. abusiveness is that would. Is Michael Jackson talented because of the abuse? Yeah. No, of no. course not. The, he's talented despite the abuse. Exactly. And I think the same with Chile. Yeah. Is did Chile prosper because of the dictatorship and the violence and and the and the insane humanitarian abuses? Of course not. They, they, yeah. they Imagine how much better it would even be if if there wasn't that kind of regime in place. Exactly. If the fear wasn't there, because when it, like even as an Egyptian, when one of my friends says, oh, you know, the British Museum has a bunch of Egyptian museum pieces there, it's a shame because the greatest uh, form of, of, of profit in Egypt is the museums. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, you're wrong. The greatest resource that we lose in Egypt is talent, is good people saying, I don't want to grow up here. I don't want to be raised here. I don't want to raise a family here. So it's the smartest Egyptians benefit the British economy. They benefit the American economy. They benefit the economy in all these other countries because of the regime in Egypt being so strict and, and not allowing people to pursue happiness. Exactly. So right and I think them. the same thing with Chile. Like, yeah, Chile might have prospered, but it would have prospered even more if some of the most talented people in Chile stayed. Exactly. And they left because of him. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people did. Yeah. And it's it's the problem is, is that like people... Uh, Chilean people are very like not outspoken because of it. Like my mother, like never talked politics ever, never ever doesn't like to. Mm -hmm. And I see that the minute the conversation even starts, she backs out. Even when it comes to the topic about you know, she, she just doesn't want to give her opinion. And I remember specifically, like when I when I protested when Trump was elected. Mm -hmm. I was going out every night and she called me and she's like, why are you being such a revolutionist? You don't have to be this way. Mm. She's like, you don't have to be a rebel. You could just stay home and just not have conflict. And I said, for what? Like, I'm not going to let my voice not be heard. And I didn't know it was because she almost got killed as a kid. I didn't ah. know that until now. She's wow. like, that's why I said that. Mm -hmm. So. So this is something I, I wanted to ask you about. So you're this kid born in Miami, but you know, but you come from this. The, this background of, of people having their lives threatened of, of, of war and conflict and protest and dictatorships. Mm -hmm. How did that affect you? In my, Cause you're not so, when I look at you, I don't, I go, she's so Chilean. You're so proud of your heritage. Mm -hmm. And so I don't, I wouldn't imagine that you're a girl who was born in Miami. No. So why, why well, do you think so you embrace your culture? we left so early to California. My dad was just like, there's too much Coke here. <laughs> We're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> but what made you, what made you hang, um, wear your heritage so so proudly um just because uh, how do i say this chile in itself is a very prideful country despite mm. all of its hardships and it's like there's still a lot of conservative people in chile they're very proud like they're so proud like world cup wise like everybody gets together it's a unified country we even made this thing called el teleton which is another word for telethon mm -hmm. and once a month or not once a month once a year if there's no election at the time, you know, the whole country raises money together for children with disabilities. Oh, wow. wow. So they're like a really good, like overall they have a great heart and they're just, we're super prideful. Yeah. Like if you, like, if you ask any Chilean, the, the first thing they'll say is like, we are a prideful country. We are small, but we are prideful. Yeah. So... So you, you're raised, you go from Miami, you moved to California. Mm -hmm. I was like, young at the time. How old were you when you came? I was probably like three or four. Okay. So I didn't now, get did the experience. You, did you feel American? 
Did you feel accepted? In, or did you feel like an outsider, an immigrant at all? Uh, yes and no, because I would I I went to like whiter schools in Ventura. Yeah, and I would just I, I'm an undercover Latina. You really are. Even yeah. your names, even your names, even undercover. my name is so undercover because yeah. people would say Michelle Stevens that they don't know me. So I would hear white kids like you know kind of shit on Latin people all the time. Like, hey, hey, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, we're not all like that. It's one of the curses. It's so funny. I told one of my friends. He said, oh, you're lucky you look so American. You probably never experienced racism. And I go, no. Yeah. Because I look so American, I experience racism by accident now. Yeah. Because they say it in front of me, not realizing it. Exactly. It's kind of a, it's a, it's a it's very and ignorant. A curse. It's very, very ignorant of people. And this happened to me once. And like, this is the only time I was outspoken. And that I think it was just because so much rage was inside me. And this is my proudest and happiest day in a way. Mm -hmm. But I was with my grandmother at a pharmacy. And at the time she was going through chemotherapy treatment. Mm -hmm. And the pharmacist did not speak Spanish. So like I interviewed, I saw her from far, like frustrating, like trying to talk to her. So I, you know, I went in the middle and I started to translate. And the lady behind me goes, no, she needs to speak American. Oh, uh, no. It's not even a language. And then I said, my grandmother doesn't need to speak anything. You speak cunt. My grandmother speaks like a woman. <laughs> Good for you. And then she goes, excuse me, don't you think you're a little too young to be talking to an older woman like that to me? And I said, no, I think you are a cunt. So I'm going to uh, speak to you. Yeah, if you're disrespectful, you. I'm going to exactly. be disrespectful right back. Good for There's you. no like, and yeah. she goes, how dare you? If only your grandmother understood. I'm like, I'm going to tell her when we get out of here. Don't worry. It's so crazy that she's asking you to be respectful when she's being completely disrespectful to yeah. your grandma. And then I was like, listen, lady, I don't know if you know this, but I'm from South America. So we are American. <laughs> I don't know if you know this. Good yeah. for you. So I was really, it, it was upsetting about that. And it was really frustrating. Yeah. Well, you know, what's funny. You and I experienced a thing together. We were on a comedy show in North Hall. Was it North Studio Hall? Studio City. Studio City. And out of nowhere, Oof. I think I mentioned this to you, Paul, before. I don't know. We're having this show. It's a really fun show. Everybody was killing it, but it was a pretty diverse show. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of immigrants going to the stage. And these two guys walk into the bar. It was like a movie. They both had cowboy hats on and cowboy boots and they were wearing giant buckles. So I'm like, oh, that's authentic. It's not just like, oh, I got a big cowboy hat on, but I drive a Range Rover and live in the hills. No. These are like, you know, they had the big belt buckle too, which is like, oh, that's, that's when they're really committed. <laughs> and, uh, and it's guys, like a WrestleMania certification. Yeah, right? It was crazy. <laughs> These guys walk in. Everything was fine. I was like, I, I, and I have friends who are into Western stuff, whatever. Uh, I don't care if you like bad music. They come in. Uh, they're starting to watch the show and there isn't a problem. And then they start getting really drunk and starting to yell stuff out. And I think the line that they crossed was one of them. They kept interrupting the show. Yeah. And we kept telling them to be quiet. At one point, I even went up to them and I'm like, hey, I'll buy you a drink if you guys keep it down. I was mm. really nice to them. Because like to me, like that's like one way you could do it as like a like someone who's producing a show. If you see someone being loud, just offer them something nice so they could shut the fuck up. Yeah. yeah that's all right. So. Yeah. No, you were so, you were great about it. All of us, I thought, did a really good job keeping our tempers. What ha ended up happening is there was a tipping point where this guy put his arm around one of the Mexican girls. Yeah, it was my friend Tanya. Yeah, who, who she's great. Yeah, she's And then he fantastic. called her, uh, he's like, hey, Pocahontas or something like that. Super incredibly racist. Super racist. And then she snapped. Good for and, her. Um, she snapped and started yelling and getting in his face. I, I got in there because the guys looked like they were starting to get aggressive and they were drunk. And towards women nonetheless. And even it, towards yeah. me. Yeah, they were being really aggressive towards the women especially. So I stood in between them. I, I put my hand on the guy's chest and I'm like, wow, this guy's like made of rock. Ah. And then I re he's like, do you know who we are? It's really funny because country Western people like to say that they're down to earth and that people in LA are all fake. And the do you know who, who we are is something they think that just Hollywood types say. No, these country... Uh, professional bull riders is what they were. And this, this guy kept yelling his name. I looked him up and he, he is a professional bull rider and a troublemaker. He's, yeah, but he's a troublemaker. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So the girls, actually the guys were just trying to keep it calm. The girls scared the shit out of them. Yeah. <laughs> they left because of the girls. And it was funny because when the, when one of the cowboy guys was arguing for the other comics, mm -hmm. a male comic, he was kind of like, being really aggressive. Mm -hmm. But then when your friend started yelling at him, I had my hand on his chest to hold him back. His heart rate started speeding up. Yeah. Like she scared him. I'm glad. And that wow. made me so proud no, of you and guys. I, and I love Tanya. Like she's been a ball buster since eighth grade. Like she's, <laughs> she's always been that she way. She shouldn't take any shit. I'm no. proud of her for standing her ground and letting him know that that kind of language isn't acceptable. And, and especially not, you're not going to come into um, a, a community of friends 
and people that support each other and start saying racist shit and not, ha- not have all and of us swarm And they had no you. idea how to behave in a comedy show. They're like, if you're a better, like, if this is your show, you should know that people drink and talk. <laughs> I'm like, not in a comedy show, dick. That's not yeah. how it works. Yeah. Other people talking when other people talk doesn't work. Yeah. Well, that was just their excuse, She's man. Saying, I mean, if you walk right. in... Huh? She said dick very right. Dick? dick. I cannot yeah, say Yeah, my mom dick. can't say dick right. <laughs> I can't. Say but deck. I can't. <laughs> no, but say um, I like a, a guy has a nice deck. Well, uh, somebody enjoy your dick. See, <laughs> she can't say deck. I can. It's okay. Gets her in trouble. She, my mother, went. my mother says so much inappropriate stuff all the time, but she doesn't know culturally. Yeah, it's not know. acceptable. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like we were at Disneyland, and you know how the Dapper Day, like the girls that wear the big dresses oh, yeah. and stuff. And my mom goes, "How come all the big girls wear the big dresses?" And I'm like, "Mom, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> we're gonna die. <laughs> Can you not say that out loud? Like she does things like that. I have this tattoo right here. This uh, lightsaber. Let's like, Star Wars." lightsaber you big I'm a nerd h- a huge nerd and my mom goes what is that and i'm like oh it's a lightsaber you know like in star wars the movie dad loved that movie and she goes oh i thought it was an electric tampon like my mom just doesn't know any better <laughs> she's one of those people like and i love i love my mother so much dude because she's just so oblivious like okay that's fine that's like, you know. so wait your dad was really into star wars super into star wars what? and i remember like when star wars wasn't cool I would never tell people in high school or middle school that I liked Star Wars. This is blasphemy. Star Wars was always cool, Michelle. Yeah, but I know, but I was always trying to be cool. Like, I was <laughs> always trying to be the preppy chick. So how did you, what was the Star Wars connection that you and your dad had? It was, no, because I remember he would always make me watch episodes four, five, and six against my will. Uh-huh. So I was like, and I didn't know, like, I was like, okay. And it wasn't until like in high school, like after he passed away, I really enjoyed them. And it was my way of like reconnecting with him in, in a weird way. Yeah. So I keep his memory alive through, you know. Stars. He, he passed away. Mm-hmm. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, how long ago? I was twelve. Wow, really wow. young. Yeah. Really young. He was in his mid forties. He had pancreatic cancer. That's Aww. so same young. thing as Swayze and Steve Jobs. I, I hate it when people have these conspiracy theories about cancer, mm. like oh, you know, Magic Johnson has AIDS and blah 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 blah. Like whenever they just put their input, and I'm like, no, it took Steve Jobs, the richest man alive, like. No, pancreatic cancer is real. There is no cure. When, when yeah. people think there are cures out there. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, no, 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 like no. oh, because like these wealthy people can yeah. can like diseases aren't really terminal if you have enough money. Yeah. No, yeah, no. you're right. You're right. Yeah, if that was true, then Steve Jobs would still be alive. It took him like seven months. My dad went away in like six. Yeah. I heard diagnosed. Steve Steve Jobs is going to be dropping uh, iPhones from the dead like Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't uh, hear about that? I thought that was the iCloud. That was all his thoughts. He's in the iCloud. Now. He's definitely in the Looking iCloud. Looking through all of our photos. What if his heaven was just iClouds of people's <laughs> shit and he just went through everybody? I think it is. I hope he throws lightning down on a, yeah. on a, on a the Facebook guy. I hope so. Mark Jackass. No, but it's funny. One of my uh, one of my really good friends in comedy. His name is Fabricio Copano. He's super. I know Fabricio. Yeah, he's yeah. famous in in Chile. Like really, wow. really no, like super famous. Like anytime I I have photos with him, like on my Instagram or whatever, all my cousins are like you know him. <laughs> it's it's weird, but you know, it's he has a joke about like. Trump and everything like that and he's like oh you guys have a dictator like they, you guys know what it feels like now like yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's true it's, sad. it's yeah. true very sad yeah. Yeah. but yeah. it's the truth though like yeah. it's nothing's yeah. far from well, listen, I'm not even a, a Democrat or a Republican I'm really an issue by issue person I just don't like hypocrisy and lying and chaos and, and that's not good for the country yeah. that's, and, and I don't like people who praise dictators and praise violence and it, like uh, no. it's insane it's too, it's too much it's, no. it's too much mm-hmm. and that's not a political that, that's, that's not a political statement that's a human yeah. It's a humanitarian statement. And here's the thing. Like, my dad's side was kind of for Pinochet at the time. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy because my uncle, my dad's brother, was the bodyguard for him for 10 years. Wow. And I remember seeing when we went, when I lived there, you know, I went to my uncle's house and I remember seeing a photo of them together. And I didn't know the history at the time. I had no idea. And I asked my cousin, Andrea, I was like, hey, who's that? Because he looked like very presidential and stuff. And he, she just looks at me and she goes, un weón malo, which is like a bad guy. Wow. And I said, wow. Okay. And they and still I keep no their more picture questions. up. Yeah. Because they're proud of like the fact that he was. It's funny. It's, it's a it's a prideful job. It's like a, you yeah. served a pre, like a yeah. leader. Even though the leader was bad. You know, yeah. yeah. It's like it's you're torn. You yeah. know what I mean? The whole family really is torn. There's no like 
left or right opinion. It's just like, well, he made the country rich, but we hate it's what so happened. Strange. And she go, my mom said like, he didn't kill anybody that I like, he killed some friends of mine, but not all of them. Oh so I don't God. know how to feel. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I, I get confused because she's so conflicted. Yeah. It's I, Stockholm her- syndrome. You yeah. know, it's people have to psychologically, they have to adapt so that they don't break. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I, I think there is a bit of Stockholm syndrome when they go, when they, they have to find the good in something that's bad. If, if your own government is murdering your neighbors and murdering your friends and torturing and, and, and there's no way out. Like yeah. sometimes you get, you know, just like that, uh, you know, that woman who, um, was kidnapped. Was it the Gettys? What was her name? You know what I'm talking about? That woman who got kidnapped in the sixties by the, uh, Simeons. Oh. oh man, I can't remember it. It's not the Gettys. It's I'll re- I'll remember after. This is bananas. I can't remember. She was uh, her father. Very she was kidnapped. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not the Gettys. No, Patty Hearst. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's who it, it was. Good job, yeah. Paul. Good job, Paul. With the uh, the, with, the with the trivia about <laughs> <laughs> about kidnapping and murder. Yeah. You know, anytime I have a question about kidnap or murder, Paul's like, I know. <laughs> he knows the answer. There's so there's so many people that are really into weird stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Segura is like that. He is. He's creepy. He's like that. super into like murder and like oh, I love it though. So let me ask you this: you you um, so you're going through a very interesting and a very mixed childhood experience, mm-hmm. and um, and then you at what age did you decide you want to become a nurse? Oh, that was early on. Um, that was like probably. I want to say 13 or 14. I wanted to be a doctor originally, Mm -hmm. but we didn't have any money. So Mm -hmm. I kind of just went to American Career College and figured it out. Well, well, hey, nurses are extremely important. I think my mom and I especially. Yes, I respect 99% of nurses. They are awesome. And I respect them more than doctors. Yeah. Because yeah. you do the, all the work the whole day, the doctor walk for one second or one exactly. minute yeah. max and sign and that's it. But the nurse, she take care of everything whole day. And we're day. doing 85% of the documentation and we're yes. doing like, paperwork yeah. for the doctor. Everything. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. But like doctors have, unfortunately, there's a lot of doctors here that have this because they're forced to take care of so many people, mm-hmm. they have like a godlike complex. So if you kind of tell them something, especially in certain countries, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. no, you get a very uh, cultural dynamic experience working in medicine. Mm. And I'll say this: like you, you have to learn how to adapt to other people's cultures. Like Asian people do not express pain; they do not want to. Wow, they that's don't, interesting. Yeah, they will be wow. the first. I think it was Middle Eastern people and Asian people learn to like withhold it, as, hold much it as, in. as much as they can yeah. versus Latinos are like, oh, no, everything hurts. Like, <laughs> it's different. <laughs> so, uh, but I've had Middle Eastern doctors like, oh, my God, it's been kind of a, an experience and I have to learn how to be submissive mm. so they don't get really angry with me. Mm. I'll be wow. like, oh, doctor, can you just sign this, please? Like, I have to be a certain way with every single doctor. They take it as an yeah. insult or something. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I have to tell you a small story about my husband. He has uh, something here. Pacemaker? Pacemaker. Pace- no, pacemaker. No, it was the, for, uh, ICD? for cancer. For it was the, the cancer. Um, oh, so for put, chemo. Uh, for chemo. What do they call so, it? Uh, they have a name for it. Mm-hmm. I can't remember anyway. So one nurse is just a new so she tried to put the needle in it. She can do it right. She oh, the porticath. Porticath, yeah. that's it. And I said, that's enough. That's enough. We need another nurse. I don't want him to poke him too many times. Yeah. My husband, he said, no, it's okay. Because if I, you let her go, she can't do it anymore. Don't let her do wow. that. Let her come over and try again with me. And I said, that's hurt you. But that's her. he say it will hurt her career. Yeah. Let her try it again. And he was so nice. And I said, I can't believe it. Yeah. But he, she came and because he was so sweet, she did it right. And she kissed him from his head mm-hmm. and she told him, thank you. Yeah. So nurse, I appreciate it very much. And I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Yeah. No, even it like with, I did hospice for years. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. Talk about reliving experiences. Yeah. <laughs> That's tough. That's really hard. It is. It is and it isn't. And this is what I mean. Like when you go in there, you already know what's happening. And you've already accepted what's going on. And you you establish more a rapport with the family 
versus the like you have to take care of the person you kind of just have to step up and you take out what's bad is going on like out of your head you have to just be it's accepting the next form of life like birth is a form of it's a life step death is also that life step mm -hmm. so it was a big experience for me but cultures deal with death very differently as well yeah definitely very very different i remember a really strange thing that they told us where it was western medicine became spiritual in, mm -hmm. in hospice mm -hmm. and i didn't expect that like my dad was supposed to pass away but he was at home and, and i think he lived on for like 12 days was it give him days. seven days without drinking anything he hadn't had any Max food seven yeah. water so they said seven days tops and he lasted more than double that 14 days 14 days so oh, wow. they said they said listen he's hanging on mm -hmm. and we want him to let go so you should play um audio recordings of relatives who've passed away yeah and so we put in this video of my of my grandmother and my dad went from being in a coma to like waking up and he like looked at me and he and i looked at him and then he started you know saying i want you to take care of your mom yeah and, I'm, and i was like i hadn't spoken to him in six days and i didn't think i would see him again yeah but it was that video and hearing his mother's voice that woke him up yeah and he's like i want you to take care of your mom and i go of course and he goes i don't mean financially and i'm like i know so he was he in three sentences, we argued. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, then, I think that's make you jump over. It scared was, me. Yeah, it's, yeah. It really scared me. Like it's, yeah. it's, it, but it also it made me feel good about Western medicine in, in the sense that there was a point where Western medicine stopped and said, okay, even we are giving into spirituality. And, yeah. and like, no, hospice is really big in spirituality. Yeah. Yeah. They have to be. That's a big part of it. Like, I cannot tell you how many times I've came into a patient's home. And then I find out that their daughter or their son or any loved one lives far away. And until that loved one reaches there, they know it's time, then they'll pass away. Yeah. Like I've had a daughters from Oklahoma finally come in and see their dad. And then the same day they go. Wow. It's a great and it's And it'll be days that they're like, kidneys have failed, livers failed. Like wow. it's kind of insane. Yeah. Wow. I've wow. seen a lot of spiritual miracles yeah. and like medicine miracles. Yeah. So what made you like this? Like what was your, what was your... Toughest day in America. Yeah, what was the day when you felt least accepted, or let, like least like you like you belong in the country? Did you ever go through that experience of feeling like you belong or don't or don't belong in the country? It was it was when I've heard like racist shit in high school mm. and people talking about like I don't I I'm a, I feel like I'm a citizen of the world and like I understand like and even in Hispanic countries we experience racism like it, there's no exception. But when I hear like like white people unfortunately talking shit about Latinos, mm. I get very upset. And, and they probably say it's especially weird because they say it right in front of you because you Yeah, look, and you like look white. I grew up with my mom cleaning houses and I grew up but my dad was a chemical and mechanical engineer. Like my, my father was very smart. My mother like, you know, we've had our struggles, you know, especially after my dad died. So when I would hear these things like, oh, you know, just have her clean a house, and I'm like, motherfucker, like my mom's cleaning a house right now. So what? Yeah. Like those were my worst days in high school. Right before we left to Chile, those were the worst days. Ever. I must have. Who did you? Could you talk to anybody about it, or was no. it? No, because the people because who I were perpetrating like, it were like your yeah, your peers, unfortunately. And like I had to educate them, but and they felt bad. You don't want to make someone feel guilty for having an opinion. Yeah. You don't. But like you have to do that. And my my worst day was like having to explain that years later to my mom, I couldn't come to my mom about that because in a way I'd be offending her. And my mom already experienced enough racism when she came into this country. Yeah. Enough. Mm -hmm. Like I've seen people talk shit to her. Mm -hmm. So, and as a kid, you can't do anything. You're helpless. That's your mother. But my mother was a ball buster. Like she figured it out. <laughs> so. so what's been your best day? <sighs> my best day was calling that old lady a cunt in front of my grandmother. <laughs> that really was my best day. What did it represent for you? Why was that because your best day? For in a way, okay. My mother, my grandmother was already going through chemo. She was already going through enough. Mm. And I knew this was like our last couple months together. And I'm glad that I was able to like tell her, no, we're actually both Americans. That message right there yeah. that said, hey, we're brother and sis. And the look on her face, it was like my reward good for you mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's there's a there is a point i think in even in my american experience where i stopped asking for my citizenship and i started taking it yeah and saying this is mine yeah, yeah. you can't you can't tell me to uh go back to where i came from when this is this is what defined me and i, I say this phrase a lot but i I, I think we care too much about what's made in America and not mm -hmm. enough about what's made of America. Exactly. You know, like there's, I, I'm, I'm made of America and, and I can tell that because when I go back to where I came from, they hate me. 
Exactly. She goes, I'm too no, American. It, I went to high school in Chile. Like my mom for a while, like I think she was just experiencing well, a lot of memory. Well, you were in high memory. school back then. Oh yeah, no, I was in high school because I was 12 years old when my dad died. So that was like about eighth grade. I went to ninth grade in a high school in Ventura mm. and my mother was like, that's it, we're leaving. And I said, what? Mm. <laughs> what do you mean we're leaving? She's like, we're going to Chile. And I'm like, for a vacation? And she's like, no, to live. Wow. And I was like, okay. And like, I think it's just this. <laughs> and she goes, yeah, because I she had a green card and it said illegal alien on it. Oh. And she, she said, said legal oh, alien. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then she said like, yeah, like you used to be at the table and be like, no aliens allowed. And I'd be like, what Aww. are you talking about? I didn't mean it. I of was course. a kid. Oh, you're a kid. But you don't know any better. And like, yeah. now I laugh at it, but oh God, I feel bad because I exiled my own sister. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's you funny. can't believe it how much immigrant goes through. Yeah. Um, and to do hop, hop, hop yeah. country. That's like yeah. me with all my family went through. And I'm like, oh, I'm just going to go to Canada. Bye. Like <laughs> another hop. Just yeah. you know? not speak the language. That's enough. Yeah. It's so hard. You can walk in the streets. You don't know what to go. What do you talk about? It. Nothing. That's a very hard thing. It's yeah. funny that the only, uh, the only Americans historically that can relate to immigrants mm -hmm. are the founding fathers. Yeah. They were immigrants. Exactly. They were the ones who left their families behind. They were the ones who left dictators behind. They were the ones who saw their friends being murdered. They were the ones who saw family members being a little bit torn. They're like, yeah, they're, we're being abused, but we're prospering. They're like, no, that's not good enough. Yeah. That's not good enough. No. And they came here exactly like, I don't think there's anyone in this country more American than immigrants. Yep. Yep. It's they not even like, hey, we're just as good as you. I'm almost saying, hey, we're better. Yeah, we're trying to leave these situations. <laughs> they really don't. Th that's the sad part is that I feel like Americans, like the ones that we met at the bar, I'm sorry. No, uh, it's true. They don't know. They don't know. And like in a way, and maybe I'm guilty of this too, like anytime, like I did karaoke, the, like I run karaoke nights now. Uh -huh. so, you know, so comedy cool. I will lead you. I totally see you doing that. I have a great voice. Um, <laughs> I, I love that I don't get voice. a choice to, to have, a, have a, a vote. No. You're just like, you see me do karaoke, I have a great voice. No, I do. You're so Latina right now. <laughs> Michelle Stevenson is gone. The Alejandra Nunez is in the room. <laughs> no, but some guy started to sing country and he had an amazing voice, but uh -huh. immediately my my mind was like, oh, he's a Trump supporter. Uh -huh. My mind went there and like, in a way, I'm like, no, Michelle, fight that. Fight yeah, that. Yeah, you should fight that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I shouldn't be that way. Yeah. yeah. But it's, I mean, it's human. It's human. But I, I, I think that there are people that go too far in, in both directions. I don't think it's anywhere near equal mm -hmm. right now. Like I think some people are going, well, the both sides are wrong. That's not true. <laughs> the uh, Nazis don't vote like Democrats. No, they right? don't. That, that's what I told my one friend. He goes, who knows who's right? I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, yeah, it is hard to tell the truth right now. There is your side, my side, and the truth in the middle. But here's what I do know. Nazis don't like who I vote for. Yeah. And that makes me feel good. Yeah. <laughs> I like that criminals and Nazis and dictators don't like the people I want in office. Yeah. But I really regret not knowing any better as like, a, like at a young age. I wish I would have asked my dad more questions at 10, at 11 before sure. he passed away. I really wish I want to know his opinion and I can't. That freaks me out yeah. because I had to ask my aunt who's in the middle. And if I were to ask my dad's brother, who's completely conservative and likes Pinochet, I know it would be a completely different wow. opinion. And I don't want to see him in that light. And in a way, like, I, it's it's hard because I know he doesn't go for, like, torturing and murdering and killing people. I know that. But I don't, I'm too scared to really know what his opinions are in mm. a way. And in a way, I'm kind of like my mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. It is. It is. It's, um, it's strange. It's strange Very. to go through that. And it's, it's almost like you had access to, uh to CNN and Fox News and then CNN went out of business. Now you're like, I only can hear Fox News' opinion. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard, especially when you're, um, you struggle with notions of identity when you're a person who's moved from one country. That, that's the negative side of being a citizen of the world. Yeah. Is you go, well, where's home? Exactly. You know. And I even went to Cuba last year and like, I didn't realize like how bad it could be in other countries. Yeah. Like I remember seeing a big old sign in Cuba that says socialismo muerto, which basically means like socialism or death. Wow. Oh. Yeah. And I, and it was a huge sign. It wasn't, it was like billboard size. And I was like, oh, that's, and you see like, you see Che's face everywhere. Yeah. You see Fidel Castro's face everywhere. He is like, he's like, they, they see him as a God out there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of crazy. You're like, oh my God, this could have been, we could, we could be living in that. Yeah. I think about all the time, like how different would I be as a human being if we'd never left? Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's a scare. I'm, my grandfather is the reason why my mother's side left, so I couldn't thank him enough. 
Yeah. 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 We have that's, a great life, uh, you know. So It's still a great country. I love this country, and that's why I, I critique it. Yeah. That's why I criticize. I don't. We have the I, freedom to. If, exactly. Yeah. If I don't like someone, I just don't say anything to them. Yeah. I don't like when we say stuff like we're the greatest country in the world because that reminds me of a boyfriend who says you'll never meet anyone better than me. Yeah. If you have confidence in your in your in your position, then you you're like, go ahead, go thing. travel to other places. Yeah. We don't need to be number one. We just need to be great. I've had. And we need to be good. Unfortunately, I've met some producers like that. Like, oh, this is the best show, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> what are you supposed to say? Yeah. Like you're like, okay, got, this is I've been at the Ice House before, dude. Right. <laughs> Thank you very much. I love the Ice House though. Shout yeah, no, the Ice, Ice House, House is the best, but just one producer in particular, I'm like, why are you saying these things? <laughs> like this makes me feel very uncomfortable. Well listen, do you want to promote anything? Um uh, t- for people to come see your comedy. I love that you talk about some of this stuff in your comedy. I think it's really cool and really important. Because it's the truth. It's, it's yeah. an Id- in a way, it's kind of like an identity crisis, you know? It is. I can very much relate to that. Yeah. Because, like, I watch a lot of Chilean movies. And I, watch, I watch novelas still to this day. That's yeah. why I'm an emotional creature of habit. You even do some of your comedy sketches in Spanish. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. I, I do, like, Selena things. And, like, you know, it, it's hard because, like, I, I got punked a lot in, as a kid and especially by cholas, but now I love chola culture. I understand because <laughs> they came here and experienced the same amount of racism. Sure, so sure. I just take them as sisters, not as bullies. Yeah. So like if, and in a way that's kind of how I became funny ish because I had to like make them laugh instead of getting my ass kicked. Yeah. Very so yeah. yeah. And I had to understand them. They yeah. went through the same struggles as I did, except they probably had it worse because of their skin tone. Yeah. So and unfortunately, yeah, I do. I say it in my skit, but it's kind of sad. Like I do have a little bit of white privilege. Yeah. And it sure. sucks. And I've seen it with like, just because I have white privilege doesn't mean I don't experience racism. Sure. And that's exactly. what people need that, to realize. Oh my God. I, I, I can't imagine you're 100% right. I could see like where your own people would be like, yeah, but you don't know what it's really like because you got blonde hair. And you, yeah. And you, and you have light eyes. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Like I speak another language very well. Do you know what's funny? Let me know if this is true for you. I think it hurts me more when my, when Egyptians are racist to me or yeah. prejudiced towards oh me God. than when Americans are. It's the worst because you're like, no, I'm trying to make us look better. What yeah. are you doing? Like yeah. it, it sucks. Yeah. But like, there's an inordinate, I think every country really has an inordinate amount of racism, depending on which country they like Chileans and Peruvians hate each other for, for like, yeah, for like war reasons, but not that they're not that bad. And I feel like everything has like a North or South or East or West conflict, mm-hmm. kind of like the Lakers and whatever fucking Clippers. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of like that yeah. where people just want to fight just to fight. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I hate that because we don't need to be that way. We're better as people and as citizens of this world. We can be better. Yeah, I agree. A hundred percent. Yeah. And that's a perfect jump off. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show. You're Thank amazing. You. A, a very funny comedian. Follow her. Thank you. Um, if you're a nice person, if you're a bad person, keep your hands to yourself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but follow her comedy. Where can people find you? Uh, on Instagram, it's a fun size nugget because I'm 411. <laughs> that's why I wore heels today. Fun it, size <laughs> nugget. <laughs> at fun size nugget. That's my Twitter and my Instagram handle. Is it N-U-G-G-E-T? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> here that's your instagram your twitter handle yeah. okay cool all right guys um thank you so much for being here michelle thank you uh you've been an awesome guest keithy thank you for being my co-host um, nice to for- meet you michelle no nice You're to meet so you too sweet. no i i like now i'm like so in love with your mom uh, after that <laughs> first is. episode i was like oh my god this is what everyone wants to steal my mom now <laughs> yeah i do want to steal your mom for like two days <laughs> i'm like no my precious <laughs> yeah my hummus making precious <laughs> well nice to meet you thank yeah. you i have lots of respect for you thank you yeah yes. me too thank yeah. you all right guys thanks for listening in um Please continue to uh, like, subscribe, and share. Um, if you're looking for comedy, uh, you can follow me at Tamar Katan on Twitter, at Tamar Cat on Instagram. And um, all my shows are listed on my website at TamarKatan.com.